All right, hey everybody, welcome to Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas. My name is Tyler Pearson. I'm our program officer here at the ranch for Heifer USA. And thank you so much for watching this video about how we raise 30,000 chickens on pasture at Heifer Ranch. It's, uh, we're gonna be talking about how we raise broilers on pasture. And in this video, we're gonna be covering our schooner design and setup, equipment and infrastructure, the breed selections that we use, and how we manage and select our pastures uh, for raising the chickens. And stay tuned until the end of the video because our livestock specialist, Christine Hernandez, who's gonna be leading the workshop in the video today, uh, will give some of her top choices for additional resource material where you can keep learning about how to raise broiler chickens on pasture and you won't want to miss it. So if you've seen any of our YouTube videos before, you've probably seen Christine Hernandez. She's a superstar around here. Her videos have been viewed over three million times in the last two years alone and she's taught tens of thousands of people how to raise chickens on pasture, how to raise pigs on pasture, sheep on pasture, and so much more. She has a ton of knowledge and I can't wait to get started to hear what Christine has to say about this year's operation for raising broiler chickens on pasture here at Heifer USA. If you're watching the live broadcast, please answer or ask any questions you might have in the live chat. I think it's over there and we will answer as many of those as we can. If you're watching this after the live broadcast is over, just ask your questions down in the comment box and we will answer every single one of them. I will be monitoring your questions throughout the broadcast today and we will be happy to answer as many of those as we can. So I'm gonna turn it over to Christine and I would love for you to type in the comments how many chickens you're raising on pasture this year and what breeds you're raising as well. So Christine's gonna give us an overview of our operation and then jump right into the workshop. How's it going, Christine? Hi, I'm wonderful, how are you? Doing very well. Good, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, this is our first live stream on chickens. We have done other videos, but I am very excited to answer your questions um, as you ask them today. So please feel free and, and, and ask and I'll answer whatever I can. Um, so welcome to one of our chicken pastures. We are raising just under 30,000 broilers this year on pasture. Uh, the batch behind me right now is currently our third batch of the year. We get uh, batches starting in mid to late February, and then we're done with our broiler season at the end of November. And so we'll be receiving new chicks about every four to five weeks throughout those months. Um, each batch of ours contains 3,200 chickens. And then as they go out into our schooners, each schooner will get roughly 530 chickens. Um, and then that gives them a 1.5 square foot per bird space within our schooners. Um, but as you can see, this big structure behind me um, is called a prairie schooner. This one specifically is titled the Black Pearl. Um, all of our schooners have ship names. Um, but what it is, it is basically a large structure that is floorless. Um, it keeps our chickens safe, but gives them access to the pasture. And so this specific one is, like I said, it's called Prairie Schooner. You can just um, look that up. I believe it's by Featherman. Uh, these ones are 20 feet by 40 feet. Um, when you, you can buy them as a kit and they'll get shipped to you. You have to put it all together. It does not come with the chicken wire or the tarp. The tarp you have to buy um, separately. This is a very um, heavy structure and it holds a lot of birds. So there's a number of different options that, that you can use out there. Um, there's the mobile range coop, which is similar to this. Um, that one is made I believe in Minnesota, it was structured in, in Texas. Um, there's also smaller chicken tractors that you can use, you know, make out of PVC. There's always the Joel Salatin style. So you need to pick whatever schooner or chicken tractor design fits best for you and your farm and the number of birds that you plan on raising in a batch or, or throughout this season. Um, so with this schooner here, we have the chicken wire um, all the way up to the top. In addition to the chicken wire, we also have um, thicker field fence on there, and that just um, helps deter predators. So we are down in what we call our bottoms, um, far away from you know buildings or other people, and so the predator, um, you know, on, on these birds could, could be high. So we put this on here just as a deterrent. We also have guardian dogs with our chickens too, um, so that helps as well. 
Um, the, sco the schooner tarp, what it does is that it covers the whole roof of this schooner. You wanna make sure that you get a schooner tarp that's a little bit longer. So exa for example, this schooner's 40 foot long. I would suggest getting a tarp that's 44 foot long. Um, that way you get some overhang there and you're not worried about it falling off. It's connected on there with wiggle wire. Um, and then the sides of the tarp are able to roll down and roll up. So it, say we're gonna get some cold weather or some rain, you know, we are able to, to roll these sides all the way down. Um, and in the summertime, you know, when we need more ventilation, we can roll those up all the way. Um, well, go ahead. Okay, quick question. You already answered it, but I just want to make sure he knows what the answer was. Um, but Patrick Style asked about, do we use these same methods during the winter time? And you kind of already said the months that we raise the chickens, uh, but it can, can folks raise what temperatures, I guess, uh, kind of prevent you and why? Sure. Um, so like I said, we raise our poultry starting in February. They start in the brooder. Um, and then our very last batch goes out at the end of November. And so we do use these, you know, for those seasons. We don't raise broilers in the, in the middle of the winter. It's just too cold out there for them. Um, we are in central Arkansas. We still do get some freezing temperatures. So water, getting fresh water to them could be an issue. Um, in the, the beginning and the end of the season, while it's cold out and we could get some, some lower temperatures and some rain, we do have plastic that we put on the ends of these schooners that we can see down at the west end of the schooner there. And so that also just adds extra protection in those colder seasons. Right now, we still have it on the west end of our schooner to give those chickens um, some shade and a break from the sun, you know, because the, the afternoon sun can be really brutal. So we left those ends on there to, to keep them protected from the UV and the heat, but we have this east end off just so that we get three sides of good air ventilation for them. Awesome, cool. I'm gonna say hi to some of our guests here who are tuning in just real quick. Uh, hey, Sunshine and Serenity from Arkansas. Uh, hey to John uh, Wigzorek, I think I probably pronounced that wrong, but thanks for tuning in. Uh, hey to John Martineau at Rose Hill Homestead, always a fan and tuning in for the shows. Uh, Patrick Style, Boy Quab, everybody from Los Angeles to Florida to New Orleans to Missouri, all across the country. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Awesome, thanks. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, what else do we want to talk about with the schooner? Sure, yeah. Um, we can go show the plastic ends okay, real quick. Sure, yeah. And then we can um, see if we have any questions. Let me just jump in here. We're going to show you the plastic ends. If you have any questions about the exterior construction of this schooner, go ahead and ask them in the live chat or in the comments uh, down below, and we will answer those questions for you. And we'll show you the live ends, and then we're going to go inside the schooner to show you uh, all the equipment and infrastructure that we're using in there. Lots more to come, pasture management, breed selection, uh, hot tips from Christine about where to get more information and so much more, so keep watching. Okay, so this is the west end of our schooner. Um, this is where the, the curtain rods, okay, we can lower and raise the curtains with this rod here, and then we just have it uh, pulled back so it doesn't get in the way. And then this is the plastic that we have on the west end, and it's actually, um, we're reusing plastic from our organic garden. Um, they use this for the caterpillar tunnels and they had to replace theirs. So we are using it. It does have UV protection. Um, it's nice and, and thick, so it's going to last us a couple seasons, um, leaving it on there. Um, and then what I wanted to show you up here is how we move our schooner. So these, these particular schooners are very heavy. You know, once you we, have it... We actually had a question about how heavy okay. are they. I don't know if you know, but... Wonderful. That's a great question. So after you get all your hardware on, you know, your feeders and your waters in there, these schooners can weigh up to about 3,000 pounds, okay? So to move this thing, you're going to either have to have a tractor that's at least 30 horsepower or a winch that can pull that 3,000 pounds. Um, the way we do it is we use a tractor. Uh, we also have a winch available. Uh, so if you're, you know, if you're raising chickens by yourself and you're the only one that's able to move them, you could use a wench with the Bluetooth remote and be in there um, moving your chickens forward. But we have this 3 4 inch cable that's long enough. We hook it up to the hitch of our tractor um, and we just have these carabiners here. 
And what's nice about these is that you can hook this cable up to either end of the schooner. So once we get down to the end of the pasture and it's time to turn around, we just move this cable to the opposite end and we can go on a little diagonal and start going right next to our recent path. Awesome, cool. Uh, did you finish with the tarps? Yes. Okay, we did have a question about uh, the tarps on the top. Okay. Um, Patrick Style wanted to know if we could share where we get the tarps. Do you know and we could put it in the comments or should we just have them email? Um, you can email us that. I don't know the specific place. Um, a lot of people are using uh, like billboard tarps, mm -hmm. and so that'd be a good place to start. Um, you can just Google where to buy billboard tarps yeah. a lot of times in your local area. Yes. But Patrick, if you will uh, shoot us an email, Kennedy in the studio can drop our email address and just write that down and shoot us an email and we can answer that question and anything else you might have that we don't get to today. Um, and in addition to that, Patrick, I would like to add that if you are going to be buying a new tarp, um, try your best to get one that has the black lining on the inside. You know, so we have white on the outside and then black on the inside, and that also helps keep the inside of the schooner cooler and um, you know re reflect the sunlight. So uh, black on the inside would be a, a good benefit for your chickens. Okay. Um, so another question. Uh, this one is coming from... Um, Malvert Trevlack and Malvert, uh, you know, we're talking about the chicken wire. Malvert wants to know, uh, do we have any trouble keeping predators from getting in? And is this enough and what else do we maybe do? Okay, that's also an excellent question. So with, um, first with the chicken wire, with these prairie schooners, you know, we chicken wire all the way up to, all the way up the wall. So this is six foot chicken wire, okay? Um, and then we also have the hard cloth on the outside. We rarely have an issue with predators getting in, and if we do have an issue, I'll show you exactly where that happens. That's actually going to happen at either end of the schooner. Um, that is also that's where predators could get in, and that's also where chickens can get out. People forget that chickens can be very curious um, and and try to get out of their out of their schooners or out of their tractors. Um, where is but that? yes, all of the the. The chicken wire and this hard wire has been a great predator deterrent. Um, and so what we have down here at the bottom of each schooner end, okay, so the, the base of the schooner stops here about a foot and a half off the ground. And so we have these larger boards that we just attach with some, some plumber's tape. You can use just about anything. Okay, so that's going to be a physical hard barrier to keep the chickens in. Uh, we also want it to move with the schooner and move with the terrain of our pasture. And to help in addition to that is we have this um, old conveyor belt that we got from, from a local friend of ours and we just screwed it onto that board as well. And we want it to overhang a little bit onto the ground, you know, drape down a little bit. And that will help keep um, animals from getting in and chickens from getting out. If you have some really persistent predators, you know, that can dig down there, um, raccoons can get their hands in, in through the chicken wire and things like that. But um, anything you can do to help cover holes and make sure that there's no, no way for them to get in. We use bag shavings in our brooder, so we save all of those plastic bags and we, can, we have a stockpile in our schooners. And so if we are moving over and there's a little divot or a hole, uh, where chickens could get out or predators could get in, we'll just put those plastic bags, you know, in that hole to help uh, be a deterrent. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to answer a couple more questions while we're outside the schooners, and then we're going to go inside uh, where it's nice and shady and a little bit cooler. We're approaching 95 degrees today it's outside, hot. so it's getting pretty warm. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's nice and cool, and we do some extra things inside the schooner to keep it even cooler. So keep watching. You're not going to want to miss this. Um, just real quick, a question from Toy Andrews. You know, we talked about the weight of the schooner. Is it possible to do a, he wants to know if it's possible to do a sliding sled, does, instead of the sled, to do a wheeled setup on a hinge? Um, I would say yes. With this particular structure, I'm not sure because it's really heavy. I do see a lot of like the smaller chicken tractors, um, you know, have, have wheels that people put down and that helps get the, the back end off the ground as they're moving that tractor forward. Um, I think if, you know, if you're determined to do it, that would be awesome and that would be, you know, a good game changer for, for us here and, and all other pasture poultry producers. So I say go for it. <laughs> 
Okay, a couple of other quick questions. Um, guys, and I know there's a lot of questions coming in. If we don't get to yours and you really, really want your question answered, you can super chat us for a small donation and we'll take priority over your question. Uh, but I'm gonna answer as many as we can in the meantime. Uh, another quick question from somebody named Haley J. Do you know who that is? I have no idea. <laughs> hey, Haley, thanks so much for tuning in <laughs> and watching. Uh, she wanted to know about grit and if the chickens need grit and what size you, you use for them at this stage. That is an excellent question. I'm going to postpone the answer to that until we get inside, if that's okay. Haley, yeah. I will tell you everything you need to know. So keep watching um, to learn all about the grip. And one last question from John Best. Uh, says they have fire ants in Texas. Mm. Wants to know if we ever have an issue with fire ants out here. By the way, we're gonna answer your question in just a second, John, but everybody keep watching because we also have a really cool video queued up. It's about five minutes that we're gonna play for you that after we're done showing you inside this schooner, we have another schooner design that we use elsewhere on the ranch that is a little bit different. So there's a lot of value crammed into a small amount of space in this video. So you'll want to keep watching to learn about that other schooner design once we're done showing you this one. Uh, but back to John's question about fire ants. Yes. Uh, so here in Arkansas, we also have fire ants. We have less of an issue with them out in our pastures. Uh, but every once in a while, we will come across, you know, a, a big ant hill. With my experience, I have seen the chickens, you know, start eating them and kind of like scratching at that ant hill. Um, and then if the fire ants kind of like start biting them, the chickens really just avoid that that fire ant hill. Um, but yes, that could be a, a big issue for you down in Texas. All right. Uh one last question. Stacy Hubbard asks how we keep storms from flipping the schooner. Oh, that's an awesome question. Um, so we have, and on the inside I can show you, but um, with with this schooner design, they are on sleds and the, the, the end of the sled, you know, goes up a little bit. And what we do, the best way we've been able to figure out a way to keep them from, from moving during a big storm is we take two T-posts and then we will pound them into the ground, but we will crisscross them over top of this sled. Okay, and you want them close enough to keep the sled from going through there. And then having them crisscross will keep the sled or the, the schooner from going side to side. And then that's a really quick, easy way for someone just to pound in a few T-posts and then to take them out in the morning. Um, we don't do all four corners of the schooner if that's going to happen. We do diagonal corners. So we just do just have to do two. Awesome. I didn't know that. I learned something new every day. And we, to, you know, storms can pop up anytime here. So we actually have T-posts stored in each schooner so that they are already here. Um, we just come out with a T-post driver and put them in. Cool. All right, let's head inside and show folks the equipment infrastructure in here. Do you want to show them our other schooners? Um, after, do you want to? Sure, yes. Okay, so with our chickens, we, with our batch sizes, like I said, we have 3,200. We put about 530 chickens in each schooner. So we have six of these uh, prairie schooners made by Featherman. But then we also have um, two other schooners that we use specifically for our turkeys that are different design. Cool. So we're going to cue that up, uh, cue that video up for you right now. It's five minutes. Check it out. And it will be When we bring our turkey poults from the brooder out to pasture, we will place them in our schooner. This structure is 20 feet wide by 48 feet long. And on the inside of it, there's no crossbars going through at the level of the turkeys. That is something that I really like about this structure compared to the prairie schooner we use for our chickens. This allows the turkeys to, to walk about that the area without having any obstacles to have to go under or over. That makes moving the schooner and moving the turkeys forward a lot easier. They can immediately move to the front of the schooner and chase those, those bugs and get that fresh grass rather than having to get over those bars. The structure is more of a hoop. There is a lot less hardware that goes into it. There are five separate hoop pieces and then two ends. Uh, those ends all come in already put together, so there's very little labor involved in putting the structure together. We obtain these schooner kits from the Yoder family, who are metal fabricators out of Missouri. These kits also come with the tarp that's over top of them. 
They're a little bit different than, than the billboard tarps or the other tarps we use for our prairie schooners. They have uh, two hems with curtain rods that fit in there. And something very important that it took me a few months to figure out is that you want to order a tarp that is a foot or two longer than your actual structure. So the tarp on the schooner behind me is actually 50 feet long instead of 48. And that just gives you that extra overhang. Otherwise, we used to have the problem with the tarp drooping and just not being tight enough and coming off the ends. On the ends of this schooner, we put two by eight treated boards and we just hang those on with, with some wire. You can use a number of different things. Um, you can also use a number of different ends instead of just treated wood. Those boards will allow the schooner to travel over various terrain and still close that gap. We also attach some old conveyor belt to the bottom of there and that just helps keep the turkeys in when they're smaller and helps deter ground predators. There's also a number of different materials you can use. Um, in the past we've used extra schooner tarp, we've used um, the, the baseboards from, from bathrooms and kitchens and things like that. Something that's important for your structure is to make sure that you have good solid fencing. We use PVC coated chicken wire. And then on top of that, we also add a layer of field fence. And that is just adding extra protection to, to our schooners to keep the turkey safe from predators and to keep the turkeys from getting out. Since the tarp on these schooners only go up a few feet, you only need to attach one layer of chicken wire to that first purlin. Um, so I, I believe that's about four feet high, so there's no need to buy six feet wire or anything like that. To help keep the tarp tension over top of the schooner, we just got some cheap ratchet straps from the local hardware store, and we connect that to the curtain rod, and then we can go around and tighten that as we need to. This is just a simple way of keeping that tarp on and a simple way of keeping it tight. We use a homemade water system for all of our poultry. And with our turkey schooner, we have it across from each other in the middle of the schooner so that all the birds have access to that at all times. And then we hang our feeders on either side of those water systems. We'll attach our hanging feeders to the top purlin of our schooner. We use little giant game bird water bowls for our homemade water system. There's also bell waterers. You can get water nipple systems. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can water your birds. You just need to make sure that you have enough water space to water all of your turkeys at the same time. We move this schooner forward with using uh, a 3 4 inch cable and a clevis, and we just attach it to either side of the schooner. And then when we get to the end of the pasture and we're ready to turn around, we can just disconnect that and move it to the opposite end and start moving forward. To raise pastured poultry, you don't necessarily have to have a large schooner. It all depends on the size batches that you will be raising. You can simply use a chicken tractor of any different style. You can use a Joel Salatin style pen or you can use a, a stationary pen and allow your turkeys to go out and forage. So pick a structure that works best for you and your farm and your farm terrain and whatever size batch you'll be raising. All right, so we hope you enjoyed that video about the other schooner design that we're using here at Heifer Ranch. That video clip is actually from our two-part video series about how we raise pastured turkeys here at Heifer Ranch. And you can check that video out after this one's over. It's called uh, Raising 1500 Turkeys on Pasture Part 1 and then Part 2. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions about the other schooner, let us know. Otherwise, we're going to jump in and start talking about some of the things that we're doing inside this schooner during the summertime to help keep our chickens nice and cool. Okay, so we were outside and I was sweating, okay, in direct sunlight. We came inside the schooner and it is significantly cooler in here. Um, there is a breeze going through, so it actually feels really nice. I wanted to point out a few things that we add to our schooners during the heat of the summer to help keep our chickens cool. Okay, so chickens automatically have a higher body temperature. They're going to be like 102 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's significantly warmer than we are. Um, so a few things that we add, one would be a mister line. And 
You can buy all sorts of different types of mister, so don't go out and search for this specific one. We got this from our local hardware store. You know, you can go and get misting systems that people use on their patios and things like that. You can make one out of PVC if you wanted. Um, there's a lot of different ways to add misting systems to your schooner. And the way this specific one works is that this side of the tape, um, once I turn it on at our, at our Y, you know, it, it mists some water down. And we have the misting line connected to the center purlin of our schooner with just some zip ties. So it's easy to put up, easy to take down once the summer heat is gone. Um, and we put it high up in our schooner because the point of misting your chickens is that you want to decrease, you know, the environment that they're in, the air that is around them. So you want the, the misting to come out of your system, you know, and then to evaporate before it even gets down to the chickens. You don't want to leave your misting system on all day. You know, that would create a really muddy mess inside your, your schooner or inside your tractor. Uh, I would recommend leaving your misting system on for about 30 minutes, you know, maybe once or twice a day. Um, set a timer to remind yourself to go and shut it off. Chickens don't like water, um, so they're not gonna go and sit directly under your misting system. You know, if you turn it on and they run away, that's okay. Uh, they don't want to be directly in the water, but their environment is going to change due to that mist. Um, and then in, in addition to that, up top on our schooner, we also have some bubble insulation. Uh, so these are four foot wide, um, and then it goes the whole length of our schooner. The reason why we have this on here is that I got the highest R value insulation that we could that came on these big rolls of insulation. Um, so the point of that is that we want to help, um, you know, resist thermal resistance is that what the R value stands for. So we want to help reflect the heat coming into the schooner. So that insulation is going to help with that, but then also the, the darker inside of our schooner tarp is going to help with that as well. Um, awesome. Cool. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'll just jump in real quick. Yeah. Um, so Adrian Avalos says, thank you so much. This is, you know, awesome, very knowledgeable, and really appreciates everything. Um, it's been really awesome, cool information to see what you're doing to keep the chickens cool in the summertime, and, and it feels so much better in here. It does. I, I can definitely <laughs> vouch. Um, so we talked about those. So if you guys have any questions about those summertime tricks or tips, uh, just let us know. Otherwise, we're going to talk about some of our other equipment in here. We got feeders, waterers, the grit. Haley, keep keep watching. We're going to talk about the grit, um, record sheets, all kinds of stuff. So so keep watching, and more to more to come. So let's see what uh, what kind of feed. So this misting system yes. is connected to the main water line. Yes, it is. And tell me about the watering system you're doing in here. Okay, um, so this is just a homemade watering system. We didn't go out and, and buy anything. Uh, too fancy, so it's half inch PVC with some old hoses and then we just adapt it down. Um, the water bowls that we use, these are called um, game bird bowls. You know, they're actually for like... Um, are they the little giants? Yes, they're, they're through little giant, yeah. Um, and so we have, you know, 10 water bowls per schooner and it's connected with rope and chain so that we can raise and lower the height of the water depending on how old the chicks are. Um, something else we do with the water is that we have a scrub brush in each schooner. So every morning before we move our schooner forward, um, I mean, you can see there's, there's some feed that gets in there that washes off of their beaks when they take a drink. Um, we take that scrub brush and we, we wipe around the inside of the bowl and then we dump it out. Um, that way we leave that water, you know, and that old feed in their old section and then we move our schooner forward. Uh, we want to make sure that they have clean water as often as possible, cool water. And so to help with that in the summertime, uh, we have a hose, you know, connected to the end of our water line. Uh, what we do is we come out here and we flush our water line uh, to help get the hot water out of there and to replace it with cool water. Um, so we just put this out the back of our schooner. We can turn our Y on, um, run it until cool water is coming through there for the chickens. Oh, that's super clever. I love it. Um, and then let's go to the feeders. If you guys have any questions about the watering system, let us know. Otherwise, we're going to go to the feeders and the grit. Okay. Um, so for our feeders, you know, we have 12 feeders per schooner, um, and we have them 
connected to the top of our schooner, and then we have some rope coming down. Um, and then our, our feeder is connected with a S hook so that we can take it in and out for when we want to, um, to wash the feeders in between each batch. Um, but then we also have a cable adjuster on here so that we can easily you know, raise and lower the feeder so it's at the proper height. The, when I talk about the proper height for chickens, for their feed and their water, is you want this, the, the feed, you know, the trough of the feeder to be at the chicken's shoulders, which is where their, their back and their neck, you know, meet together. And so we can easily just adjust these um, every day as we're doing chores to make sure that it's at the right height. And you want to make sure it's at the right height for the average chicken. All these chickens are not going to grow exactly the same, so you're going to have some bigger, some smaller, so you need to make sure that those smaller chickens can get food and water as well. Um, these specific feeders are the Cool brand, and they hold 35 pounds of feed in them. Um, but yeah, they work great. They're, um, they hold up really well. They're easy to use, easy to, to maneuver and things like that, easy to clean. And what kind of feed do you have in there? Um, so we have a specific feed ration that we use. We have a starter feed and then we also have a grower feed. We use the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative ration and we get it out of Hostetler's Feed Mill, which is in Buffalo, Missouri. Um, this grower feed that the, the chickens eat while they're out on pasture is a 19% protein. Um, you know, it's corn, soybean meal, some, some vitamins and minerals. So. Awesome. Okay. Grit. Grit. All right, Haley, are you ready? <laughs> um, so this feeder is a little bit different than what we give them their food in. Um, and that's just because it's, it's what we have. And so this is what I offer our grit in. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a feeder. I mean, you could put it in, in a trough if you wanted. You can open the bag and just leave it out, and the chickens will come eat it as they want. Um, but I like it to be hanging, you know, at the, at the same height. It's always accessible to the chickens. Um, so grit is just, you know, gravel. It's stone. It is not a requirement for chickens. Um, they do prefer it, and they like it, so it's really just a supplement that we offer them. Um, the way that the chicken's stomach works is they have something called a gizzard, and that gizzard is a mechanical part of their stomach, and that is what's going to help grind down the rest of their food. It's going to help um, grind down the forage that they're eating out on pasture. And so when they have access to, to little rocks like this, then that really helps them be able to get everything out of that feed as possible, keep breaking it down so they can easily continue digesting it. Um, for poultry, they just have two sizes, sorry, for broilers, they have two sizes, size one and size two. With turkeys, um, they have up to four sizes. So as the turkeys grow, they're gonna need bigger and bigger grit. A lot of people say, you know what, I, my chickens are out on pasture, they don't need grit, they can get the grit from the ground. Um, that'd be awesome if that was possible, but you know, if you dig down into our soil, if you look under this grass, I mean, they're gonna have to dig pretty far even to get to the dirt. Um, there's not really going to be rocks and pebbles down there. You know, we have, we have soil. We don't have gravel everywhere. So they're not really able to pick up the, the correct amount of, of rock or hard material that they would if you just offer it to them free choice. Cool. Awesome. All right. I know that um, we talked about feed, and we want to give you um, something, some information about something new that we're doing this year that is helping us expedite our feeding process. So bringing feed all the way out here to the pasture in the past took up a lot of time, effort, and energy, and labor for our staff. And so we're trying something new this year. Do you want to show them the yes, new thing? Yes, yes. All right. Check this um, out. I would like to take a side step real quick. I have this out here as a reminder. Um, so... In addition to, you know, the, the misting system, the bubble insulation, you know, to help keep our chickens from getting heat stress. Um, so chickens can get heat stress, you know, if it's over 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which it is right now. Um, you can just add some apple cider vinegar into their water. You want to do about one ounce per gallon of water. And that just really helps um, decrease that, that heat stress that they, 
that they may be experiencing. Um, what we, I don't really measure it. You know, I just open this and just put a little bit in, in each water bowl, um, you know, a couple times a day, and that will really help with that. A quick question while yes. we're here at the waterers. Um, Janice Woodard Heath asked, how do you change their height, the height of the water? Okay, good question. And so we we have um, an eye an eye bolt going through the board, and then we have this chain coming down, and then just an S hook. So you just lift up your water and your S hook, and you can move it up a chain length, or you can move it down a chain length. If you wanted to, and you already had those cable adjusters that we have on our feeders, you could easily add the add that to your water system um, and raise and lower it like that. Cool. All right, uh, Janice, thanks so much for asking that question. We're gonna step outside again into the inferno. <laughs> to show you guys something pretty cool. That is well, saving us a lot of time and energy here at the ranch. Okay, yeah, so a new addition that we have here at Heifer Ranch um, are these grain buggies. Um, these are called Versatotes and you can get them, you know, from a number of different places. This is a three ton tote, so it holds about three tons of feed. And you will see a lot of farmers using these, you know, to actually transport feed from a feed mill back to their farm. So they are roadworthy. Um, what we do is we use these to get grain from our grain bins up at our brooder, and then we bring it down here so it's already out on pasture to feed our chickens. Uh, it saves us time and labor rather than having to to load up all the feed on a trailer, you know, with 30 or 40 buckets. Um, we have a, a few buckets already out here so we can just take them from the grain buggy into the schooner. Um, the way it works is you would just put your bucket underneath this door, lift this door up and it will fall down. There's a nice little window there so you can see how much feed you have in there. There's a ladder up front so you can climb up there and take a, a visual inventory. Something that we just um, recently added to this is adding, this is like a feed catcher is what I call it. Um, it's just an old you know, barrel that I cut down because sometimes the feed doesn't come out you know, very smoothly or you know, comes out a little too fast and you may spill feed out of your bucket. If anyone's raising poultry right now, you know the cost of feed is extremely high. And so we're just trying to, to not waste any feed at all. So uh, if any feed does spill, you know, we can catch it in that little bin and then put it back into our bucket. Cool, awesome. All right, um, so we've got some more questions we're gonna answer here in just a minute. I just want to take a minute to say uh, thanks everyone for sticking with us. we got a lot more great information coming your way. We're going to talk about the breeds uh, that we choose here at the ranch and why. We're going to talk about our pasture management and how we choose where we're going to place chickens each year and what kind of features we're looking for. Um, so thanks so much for sticking around. More to come. Some great advice from Christine on where you can get additional resources of information you won't want to miss. Um, so thanks for watching. Let us know how the live stream is going. Let us know if you're enjoying this. If you're finding value in this, give the video a like, share it with your friends, uh, and let us know if you are finding value in this live stream. We would love to hear from you. Um, so we do have a question about feed. We're going to answer in just a second, and then we're going to cover a couple more things inside about the equipment and infrastructure. And then we're going to move on to the, the next section where we talk about the breeds. So if you have any remaining questions about the equipment inside the schooner, go ahead and get those in and we'll answer those before we start talking about the chickens themselves, the real stars of the show. <laughs> um, so we got a question from Janice Woodward and she wants to know, do you feed organic, non-GMO mm. or conventional feed? Yeah, that's also an excellent question. So we sell all of our chickens to the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative. And so all of our chickens are fed non-GMO grain. Awesome, cool. All right, let's head inside and check out the last few pieces. I think we want to show the record sheet. Yes. And then we'll start talk, if we don't have any more questions, um, we're going to start talking about these lovely chickens. Okay. So each one of our schooners um, has a little file keeper in it so that we can keep track of 
each schooner's records. Um, if you've seen our previous chicken videos, this probably looks familiar to you. Um, this is just a really simple record sheet where you keep track you know, of your mortalities, the shavings while they're in the brooder, how much feed you're feeding um, for every day of the week for both morning and evening chores. Um, a new sheet that was created by our uh, poultry production specialist and the Grassroots Farmers Cooperative is this fancy one. Um, this is a daily log for broilers, and this has all the information that you that you need to keep track of. Uh, records are really important to help you know, you know, what's going right, what's going wrong, where you can improve. Um, you know, while they're in the brooder, your temperatures, your high and low, the humidity, still keeping track of your feed and mortality um, for each day. It also has um, information that, that we need to know. So for example, you want full light for 24 hours for the first three days, okay? And then also how much square foot per, per bird we need um, as the chickens get older and, and go out to pasture. Um, then it also has in, we weigh our chickens every Monday um, so we know how they're growing. And there's a section for that as well. Cool. Um... Okay, so if you'd like a copy of that record sheet, you can send us an email to the email address in the chat. We'll also put a link in the description where you can get a copy of that. Uh, so we will make that available for anybody who wants it. Um, I'm going to walk over here stealthily and show them okay. the weight bucket. Okay. And you can talk about it. Okay. Because one of the things that Christine mentioned that we record on here is the weights. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna go show them just real quick the setup okay. and you yep. just let them know how often and, and okay. what it is. Yeah, so every Monday we weigh our chickens um, and we just pick, you know, a, a small sample from each schooner. So depending on, on how much information you want, you know, you could pick five chickens from each schooner. And what we do is we, we just use a fish scale that you can get off of Amazon. Uh, we tie that to to something to hold it in place. And then we use a five gallon bucket and we catch a chicken, you know, we put it in that bucket and we get a weight on it. What's cool about that scale is that you can zero it out with that bucket on there. So you really uh, never have to touch your scale again each time you're weighing your chickens. Um, the reason why we weigh our chickens is that we wanna know like how, how they're doing, how they're growing throughout their seven weeks here. Um, you can also use that information to compare all your batches that you grow throughout the year and then um, maybe also for like a couple years to see how, how they're growing. And you can even uh, compare them to the breed standard for that, that growth cycle. Cool. All right. Um, let's see. One question um, from Romo. Romo wants to know if you prefer this schooner or the other one without the crossbars in it that we showed in the video. Yeah, uh, that's an excellent question. And I actually prefer the other schooner. And one of the main reasons why is because that particular schooner, that style, doesn't have those three crossbars that go through here. So you can easily, you know, walk through the whole schooner without having to, to pick up your leg to get over those. It's a little bit safer, especially if you're carrying five gallon buckets around. Um, it's a little bit longer. And so that j it just gives your chickens a little bit more space. Um, it's, it's not as tall and it's also lighter. Um, those ones, I don't know exactly how much they, they weigh. We don't have the specs on there, but they're significantly lighter than these prairie schooners. Cool. All right. Um, and so that answers uh, Patrick Styles' question. Patrick asked, you know, if you could use that one for chicken as well. So. And yes, and we have um, our, our first batch of this year. We actually put some chickens in there, and they absolutely loved it. Um, they did. They did really good in there. Awesome. Um, all right. So that does it for infrastructure and equipment inside. Let's start talking about the birds themselves. Uh, I'm gonna get down and show you them. So. Their feathers are still coming in a little bit. How old are they? Uh, these chickens are five weeks old. So they are leaving their awkward teenage phase where you know they're getting rid of their down and getting their mature feathers in. So a lot of them you'll see, you know, have to have their adult white feathers in. The female chickens are going to feather out faster than the male chickens. So we do straight run 
which in the chicken world, that means that we have a mixture of male and females. We don't get them sexed before we, before we get them. Um, so the females will feather out a little bit faster than the males. You know, if it's really hot out, they're gonna grow less feathers um, because they need to you know, help keep their bodies cool and those feathers are actually insulation. Um, they won't really grow very many feathers like underneath their wings or around their vent area. Um, those will, will stay bare sometimes, but if there's a chicken out there that isn't like fully feathered or has less feathers than the other, um, that doesn't mean it's sick or anything, you know, it's just, it hasn't grown all those feathers in yet. Um, so these specific chickens are Ross 308s. And if, if you're in the, the chicken world, um, these are Cornish cross birds. Um, there's a few different strains within the Cornish Cross. There's Cobb 500s, there's Ross 708 and 308. Um, we started with 708s at the beginning of the season and then we switched over to these 308s. Um, the, the 308s, we see that they grow more uniformly throughout the whole batch. Uh, the 708s, you know, we had a, a bigger size difference when we sent them into processing. Um, but but all of these Cornish cross birds, you know, they're going to grow more of the, the the bigger breast, you know, that breast meat. Um, they're going to be slower moving. So you need to rem remember that as you're doing your chores and moving the chickens forward. You know, the older they get, the bigger they get, the slower moving they're going to be. They're not as active, um, but they are going to grow, you know, a lot of meat in a short time. So they're very, very much a production animal and they're efficient at doing that. Um, if you, and so this chicken's gonna look more like the chicken that you're gonna get in the grocery store. Um, but if you're interested, you know, in like the, the darker meat or slower growing broiler chicken, a good chicken to get would be like your Freedom Rangers or your Red Rangers. Um, those are gonna take more like 12 weeks to grow out where we finish these Ross 708s and 308s, we finish them in seven weeks. How do they taste compared to what's in the grocery store in your opinion? Um, these chickens, you can actually taste a difference. They are more flavorful. Um, they're out on pasture. They're eating grass. They're eating bugs. You know, they're scratching at the soil. Um, so they, there's a significant taste difference. And I recommend, you know, purchasing some grassroots farmers cooperative chicken and doing a little taste test with what you get from the grocery store. Um, let me know what you think. Um, but you know, your Freedom Rangers, your Red Rangers, that's going to be darker meat. They're more active. They're slower growing. So it's actually going to cost you more to raise those. Those chickens are going to take more feed to grow out. Um, and they just won't have as, as big of a, a breast meat as these uh, Rosses will. And anybody in the continental U.S. can order from Grassroots, right? I do believe so, yes. And they can have a box shipped right to your door. So if you want to try the products that we're raising here at Heifer Ranch in Perryville, Arkansas, just check out uh, Grassroots farmers co-op or grassroots co-op.com cool all right hey patrick you're welcome we're, we're so glad to be answering your questions thanks for asking some really great questions um it's all about community learning together we love to hear from you guys so thank you very much uh any other questions you guys want to ask about the breeds i'm going to turn it back over to christine we've got one question um again i think we talked about this but uh john might not have been here um, John about asked about predators digging under the schooners. Do we ever have problems with that? Um, yes. So now that we have our livestock guardian dogs, um, we rarely ever have predator issues. But yes, predators, you know, if they're really determined, they can dig under. It's most commonly that they dig dig under the shorter ends, you know, where we have those, those boards that move. Um, that's where, where they would come in at. Okay, cool. All right, uh, if you guys have any questions about the breeds, let us know. Otherwise, we're gonna jump over to our last subject of today. Uh, stick around because we're gonna, go, we're gonna show you some epic drone footage here in just a minute that we shot this morning while we were moving the schooners. That gives you a very clear picture of the path that these schooners take, about the impact that they have on the pastures, uh, and you won't wanna miss that. So we're gonna step wherever Christine wants us to step and then talk a little bit about why we chose these pastures. Yeah. So we'll come back out into the sun, unfortunately. Um, 
But so this is just one of our poultry pastures that, that we have here at Hefford Ranch. We have a few that, that we're able to use um, and more that we're gonna get ready to use. And so as you're thinking about raising pasture poultry, you really need to take a look at your farm first. Um, something that, that we have an issue with here every once in a while um, that you really need to think about and go out and, and explore would be during those rainy seasons. You know, you wanna go out to the pastures that you're going to be raising your chickens in, see where water is holding, um, or if you have like a creek going through there or a low spot or anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to avoid that uh, if it's going to rain. Um, these pastures are very open, so we don't have trees in these ones, so we don't really have anything to avoid with that. So there's, there's less shade um, for our schooners, but we can just go down on straight paths. Uh, you wanna think about your water access. And so we have a road going through this pasture and then we have quick connects uh, underground every 100 feet so that we can move our hoses along with our schooners so we don't have to run miles and miles of hose to get water to the chickens. Um, and since we are large scale, but this will also pertain to those of you that, that may be smaller scale, would be how you're gonna get the chickens out at processing. And so when we send our chickens to processing, we get a, a 40 foot trailer in here and put all the crates on there. So we need to make it accessible for, for that trailer and truck to get in here and get out. Um, and then also with our schooners that are large, they're 20 by 40. You know, we picked these specific pastures because we did soil samples on them. They needed um, the chicken manure. They needed the fertilization that the chickens are giving. Um, so we only want to raise chickens down here for a few seasons. And then we want to move on to the next pasture, you know, that needs a little bit of help, a little bit of fertilization. And so making sure that, that you have gates big enough, you know, and a good way to get from pasture to pasture. Um, so actually after this batch, we're going to be moving these four schooners to a new pasture. Um, I'm just going to show yeah. folks all four of them because I haven't shown them all yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, and so what we try to do with, with schooners that we raise like this, all four of them together, you know, you start them at the same end of the pasture and you move them together. You, know, you move them every morning, the same amount of space. Um, it's important to make sure that you leave space in between each schooner. We try and leave a schooner width in between each schooner. That way, if we do have to turn around, that there's enough space that we can just, you know, uh, connect the cable to the other end and start moving back down the pasture. Um, and then with their space out like that, maybe staggered a little bit, that's also going to help with airflow and ventilation for our schooners. Okay, awesome, cool. Let's uh, jump in and ask a couple of questions real quick. Um, back to breeds, Rose Hill yes. Homestead was asking, how do you know which, um, which number of Cornish Cross you're going to get? Um, so you really need to check with the hatchery that you use. So not all hatcheries carry Ross 708s and Ross 308s. They may carry just one or the other. So we get our chickens from Keith Smith Hatchery and that's actually local here in Arkansas. And so they offer Ross 308s and 708s. And so we just specify which one we want. Um, so yeah, you just need to check with your hatchery. Cool. Um, and then let's see, Patrick Stahl wants to know what is the minimum acreage you would need for one of these schooners? That's an excellent question. Um, I'm also, I'm gonna tell you the answer, but I'm also gonna tell you that there is another great video on us moving our chicks from the brooder out to pasture um, that explains that you know, a little bit more in depth. And so with each schooner, with the size that it is, um, we can cover three to four acres of space with just one schooner. Cool. Excellent question. Yeah, and, and Stacy Hubbard is helping answer some of these questions. Thanks so much, Stacy. Great answers. Um, we, lo we love the interaction with the live audience. Let's see. Um, a couple more questions, and then let's queue up that drone video whenever yeah. you're ready to talk about that. Um, let's see. Do we plant Rose Hill Homestead? Do we plant any plants, especially for the chickens? 
Um, currently, no, but um, if you watch some of our other videos, we do we are doing holistic animal management, so we are planting cover crops. We have not planted cover crops in our specific poultry pastures, um, but we have a ton of clover growing. You know, we have fescue. In the springtime, we'll have a ton of vetch and curly dock. You know, chickens love the broadleaf vegetation because they just have beaks so you know they can poke holes and and grab larger things but like blades of grass is a little bit more difficult for them cool all right boy quab wants to know if you have fewer chickens in the tractor can you move them less frequently <clears throat> um it's i would say that is depending on how you want to raise your chickens um i would still move them every day they are still going to you know, lay down manure for you. They're still going to scratch. Um, if you do have to leave them there for a day or two, you know, th that's not the end of the world. Um, you just don't want to lay down too much manure that you're causing like manure burns. Um, and it's also an animal welfare thing you need to think about. Um, if the chickens are forced to stay on their manure for too long, they can get paw burns um, and the, the pad of their, of their paw turns black. Okay, uh, one last question from Yiris Clark. Do your birds uh, ever get sick? What kind of sicknesses do you ever have to deal with? Um, that's a good question. So we get our chickens vaccinated from the hatchery. They can get vaccinated um, while they're still in the egg. So they get vaccinated for uh, Merrick's disease and a few like respiratory um, things as well. If they do get sick, you know, coccidia is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, coccidia is going to be a common illness that not only broilers get, but lots of other poultry. And so that's just a, a protozoa that lives in their intestines. It causes their their manure to, to be red and it causes irritation within their intestines. Um, that's most commonly going to be from you know being on their manure, being exposed to too much manure while they're young. That's gonna be around days 10 to 21, really common between like two and three weeks old. Um, <clears throat> there's coccidia stats you can give them. You can also give them you know raw milk or yogurt that would help uh, decrease that as well. Awesome, cool. Hey, great questions. We got some more we're gonna get to in just a second. Um, but we definitely want to, before the hour is over, we want to talk about the rest and recovery periods and the path that these schooners move and show you guys some really great drone footage. We'll put it on the screen whenever uh, Christine's ready, but uh, you want to talk about that part. Yes, okay, so when our chickens first come out to pasture, they're about two and a half to three weeks old, depending on the weather outside. And so we, we start them in the schooner, they stay at that specific area for two days because they're smaller, you know, they're not producing that much manure yet, not that much impact on the ground. And then after that, we move our schooners forward every single day, rain or shine, um, they get fresh grass. So this is an optimal example of rotational grazing. You know, when you say rotational grazing, a lot of people are gonna think about cattle and sheep, but chickens are rotationally grazed and moved every single day. Um, and so what we want them to do is we want them to lay down their manure. We want them to scratch at the soil, you know, break it up a little footage. bit. Drum footage? Yeah, you want it on there now? Yeah, sure. Okay, we're going to throw it up. Okay. Keep going. Um, <clears throat> and so they're leaving their manure. They're scratching at the soil a little bit. They're eating some of that vegetation. And so that is all going to really help our soil, help the microbes in there. Um, help with, with water retention, help with future forage growth. And so behind the schooners, you know, you're gonna see grass that looks like it's been mowed over. That's because the chickens have already been there. They've crossed over that, they've laid on that grass. And then there's gonna be some brown and white manure there. Um, once that grows back, you are going to really be able to tell the path that those schooners were on because that grass is gonna be a darker, really lush green. You know, that forage is gonna look significantly different than the forage that's growing right next to that path. Um, is there drone footage over? No. 20 seconds, I think. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll show, uh, we'll show the, the lines. Yes, and then we- um, All right, we're good. Okay, um, so as, as we're standing right here, um, a lot of this manure has already dried due to the heat of the summer. Um, but you know, it's not stinky or anything. I can't, I don't smell chickens while I'm out here. 
you can see you know, where they scratched at some of the soil. Um, they're really gonna leave their manure around where their feeders were or where they slept at nighttime. Um, and so all of that is going to be absorbed and add nutrients to our soil. And then if you just look right next to where our schooners were, you know, that's, that's what they had access to, very similar to that, um, that we moved them onto. Mm -hmm. um, so you can even ski, this is the skid mark from our schooner. Okay, this is where the sled went. So this is where chickens have been. They were here for 24 hours. And then this is what it looked like before the chickens got to it. Okay, so, so you can they're obviously eating quite a bit of that forage. Yes, you know, they, you can see that they're eating some of it, they're laying on it, they're pooping on it. Um, so this is gonna come back, you know, bright green and beautiful. Um, and we, we want it to rest. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, we want it to rest. So our goal with, with our schooners is we don't wanna cover the same ground within a season. If you have to, that's okay. But you know, you want that ground to have recovered. You want that forage to have recovered before you run chickens back on it. Uh, you wanna be able to, to look at that previous path and not see any chicken manure at all. Um, so we try and not run our chickens over the same ground um, in, until next season. Awesome, okay. Well, that's a ton of awesome information. Uh, we're gonna answer one more question and then Christine's gonna give you some extra references where you can continue to learn uh, that she utilizes. And we wanna again say thank everybody so much for joining us for the live stream. Let us know in the comments what you thought of today's experience. Did you find value in it? What can we do to make them better? We'd love to hear from you. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube page if you want to see more of these live streams. Give this video a like so the YouTube al algorithm will give it a like and more people can see it. That would really help us out a ton. Um, so thanks again everyone for being here. Well, the last question we're going to answer and then get to those references will be shade. from Stacy Hubbard. Um, so Stacy wants to know, talking about forages, if there's any plants or weeds to avoid with the chickens. Um, not that I have come across. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know the answer to that. Um, you can see, you know, where our chickens have been, we have some cockleburrs coming up. They didn't really touch that, that plant because they couldn't really reach it. Um, you know, we, we have all sorts, we have a wide variety of vegetation that we have here in our pastures. You know, we don't want a monoculture. We want multiple, multiple forage species, but I haven't come across anything. If they don't like it, they won't eat it. Um, but I do have some um, extra recommendations here for you guys. If you um, are raising poultry or you're interested in raising poultry, I would highly recommend that you join APPA. So it's APPPA.org, and it stands for the American Pastured Poultry Association. Producers Association. Producers Association. There's a lot of peas in there. Um, that is a group of pasture poultry producers all over the U.S. Um, you know, they have a conference once a year. They have an online list listserv and forum where you can answer your questions and get so many uh, really valuable, knowledgeable um, answers back. So APA, I, I highly recommend that. And if you're more of a podcast listener, there's a podcast by Mike Badger. It's called Pastured Poultry Talk. Um, he has over 100 episodes right now, touching on all sorts of different poultry related things. So give that a listen. Um, he's a very knowledgeable guy. And then uh, shout out to my good friend and really my mentor, um, while well, I started raising poultry would be Jeff Maddox. This is the fourth edition of his book and it focuses on feeding and management. Um, I really use this as like a, a guide. You know, I, I've read it numerous times. Um, like I said, it's his fourth edition, but there's a lot of really great um, information in here about broilers, layers, turkeys, feed, and all sorts of stuff like that. So um, give that a read. And then um, I'm sure everyone knows about Joel Salatin. Um, this is a great book, Pasture Poultry Profits. Um, you can't go, he's been doing it for years and years. So you can't go wrong with that. Um, and then we've had a lot of questions about predators today getting in. Um, so I recommend this Encyclopedia of Animal Predators. Uh, you can just get this off of Amazon. 
you know, if you have a, a predator issue, you can look in here and it will tell you like what to look for, um, maybe what they've done to your animal as different like things to, to see to help you really focus down on what predator has gotten into your coop or into your schooner. Awesome. And guys, we will put all of, we will put links in the description of this video once this broadcast is over to all of these resources. So if you found value in this and you want to listen to it again, the recording will be available as soon as uh, we sign off here in just a minute. And so you can check this video out and all of our other videos about regenerative agriculture here on our YouTube page. So like this video if you found it valuable, subscribe to our page so you can be notified next time we go live or publish a video. We publish videos on regenerative agriculture every week. Christine, yeah. thanks so much. Thank you. This has been incredible. I learned a ton. Our audience has had a great time and really appreciate you being here. To all of you watching from around the world, thanks for joining us here in Perryville, Arkansas. I'm Tyler Pearson. We're Heifer USA, and we're out of here. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.